All right, to work on this background, or I finished with the background, now to, to keep working with the type, you can see all of those effects that I have made on a copy of my black vector type for, for the word dead. And you can see how it's more readable with that white stroke. I like the color, but the color is a little plain. I like the texture, but the color, the texture is a little plain, so I'm going to mess with it. I don't think I like the embossing as much. So you can turn these off like willy nilly and try the different features. And you can also double click on them and adjust their individual settings, like how opaque they are. Or their blending mode for the highlight of the embossing versus the, the shadow of the embossing. kind of like that more. Yeah, the, just the lighter texture on it. Then we can try some different uh, ways of getting a little bit more texture. I can give it an inner shadow and I can make that noisy and larger. and set it on Dissolve. And I can change its color. Oh, well, that's kind of nice. So instead of being black, maybe it's more like a dark brown. And then my gradient pretty even, so maybe I, I make a darker color somewhere in the gradient, mess with that, change it up a little. So there's so many different ways you can go with it. And then this is what's kind of fun is I can move all of those effects onto another vector layer if I want to, but I want to make sure I, I like them all. I'm going to soften the drop shadow a little bit. It's a little strong. That's good. And I want to keep this color overlay color on the top, but everything else I want to try to bring over. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this. This is a new one. I'm going to make it violet. And then I'm going to right click on this one with all these effects. That's why I made it as a duplicate. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say copy layer style. That's all of these effects. And then I click on my new one, and I'm going to say paste layer style. And it's going to bring them all in. You see how it makes them match? But of course, my color overlay was different, right? So if I move my color overlay in, now I have two color overlays here, and I can decide which one I want. So you really have a lot of power with these effects tools. And then I want to affect the stroke. Maybe I'll make this stroke go on the outside. I think that works a little bit better. Yeah, maybe I'll play with that color overlay and take that down a little bit so some of that gradient comes through. Or I can even play with the blending mode. That's a little weird. Let's try pin light. Nope. Let's stay with there we go with darken. 
All right, so now I've got my color type. It's got all that variation in it. So now I want to see what it looks like without a background. Well, let's save my work, Command S. This is my full design poster layout. It's got all the options built in. It's got the vectors in there as smart objects. I'm going to turn off that, and then I'm going to take all those background layers, put those into a folder so I can turn that off easily if I need to, just like that. I guess I'll leave out the white. So let's go to my history before I grouped. So everything up from the blank white that's part of the background, I'm going to select, put it into a folder, so I can turn that off. And now I can see what that color type is doing on its own, just on white. And all of the different effects it would have on whatever uh, background I would use. And I'm overdoing it quite a bit. But let me show you how you can overdo it even more. Just because I'm the instructor showing you different options to play with. So if I do an image search, let's look for a torn paper texture. Let's do torn billboard. I want something kind of colorful. Poster. There we go. Something kind of crazy. I'm going to go to large size. So at least a thousand pixels. And I want something that is, doesn't have a watermark in it. And to check it, right, I'm always going to right click and say open image in new tab. Make sure it's good quality. This does have a watermark. You see that? Aha. Got to do your diligence here. Even though it's freely shared on, and that one's got a watermark too, on Pinterest. These are all photo bucket watermarks. From the days photo bucket was usable. Now this is not something I need to worry about um, infringing on the copyright of because this is not going to be recognizable the way I'm going to be using it. But I don't want watermarks. Open link in new tab. Yep, watermarks. All right, so let's try this under usage rights. Just look at Creative Commons ones. That should get rid of any that are stock sites. And it limits our options significantly, but this one looks interesting. Yep, not image, open link in new tab, and then open image. This is some good, good open kind of image <laughs> that I can use. Let's save it just like I did with that crumpled paper texture. And let's, what happened? <laughs> Bring it on to my Photoshop. But this time, instead of it being the background, I'm going to cut the text out of this. So I'm going to stretch it. We did this way back with exercise one, like it's wrapping paper. I'm going to roll it out so that it overlaps my text. Then I'm going to take my vector type. Remember, I've got it in two places, green and blue. I'm going to use my magic wand. There it is, the death. I'm going to select the inverse from my type. And then I'm going to copy that, duplicate it, Command-J, out of my background. Oh, i got to get the insides of the 
of it too. So here, let's turn this off for the moment, and then I'm going to hold down Shift. Got to be on the right layer. Get these insides. Okay, now select inverse, and now duplicate that from that layer. And then I can play with layer styles there. So it's going to give it a little bit, a little bit extra. And I can play with the blending modes. This is all a little too clever by half, like just a little too complicated, but show you all the different options you have. That's why it's often really good just to have um, inspiration, you know, to help guide your decisions. Okay, I'm going to do that again with this type. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to select the empty space within. These are called undercuts. Then I'm going to select the inverse of it. Because remember, selections move with us. Then I'm going to duplicate that from this layer. Even though this layer isn't turned on, I can duplicate from it. And then I can play with that opacity and that blending mode. And maybe that's my final color solution. See how that looks with the illustration. See how that looks with the background. And that way, the, the illustration really comes forward a little bit more. Yeah, I think I like that. And then anything can be modified, right? I can take down, modify my background just by turning layers off, playing with opacity. I can change the blending modes. Dissolves a little strong there. Yeah, a little too strong. All right. So, I'm going to save my work. How do I post my color, my final color of my type? I'm just going to turn off that background and turn off the illustration. And then, if I want to make it match what I did in Canvas before, I can keep the gray and then just show the color on the gray. So why don't I do that? So it's a bit of a pain. Maybe the easiest way is just to move this out. Move this one, which is just the gray, out of the group with command left bracket, and then just have it turned on like that, and then just do a screen grab. This is my color type. Save that. And then to finish the whole poster, turn everything on, and we're going to save that as a JPEG. And then I'm going to, in the next video, show you something even crazier, if we have time. Or maybe at the beginning of next class. But that color is a lot better than what I had mocked up before, right? But I can always layer this on if I wanted to. In different ways. Yep, but I like it better without it. All right. So... Save it for myself as a Photoshop file, and then save it as a copy once that's finished. These can be quite